Yo, hey guys, Smallmouth Crush. Today we're going smallmouth fishing because that's what we do. We're going to head out there, try to find a few fish, use some different techniques perhaps, maybe some jerk baiting Alabama rigs. Might do a little finesse fishing. Of course, we're going to do some finesse fishing, but we're going to try to see if we can catch a few fish on this windy fall day here in upstate New York. That's all coming up. Well, at least I don't have to be all really bundled up this morning, which is good. The last couple days, it's been a little bit of colder. Water temp is in the 50s. And the fish are all over the place, just like they are year round. There's always shallow fish, there's always deep fish, it seems. Uh, yesterday, I caught them deep, pretty good, in that 30 to 40 foot range. And uh, today I'm just in a whole different section of the lake and we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, medium depth range out to 20 probably, uh, but we'll certainly be shallow as well looking at times. I'm not sure what to expect. So first thing I'm going to do is head out and try to look for some offshore structure in some specific areas where the fish have been, uh, where they'll start relating to some of the perch that are going to be moving in here. So that is the plan. Well, oops, sorry bud. All right, so as you can see, uh, this day was extremely windy, and I was in what I would consider somewhat a protected area, but the waves were, uh, they were building, and they were only going to get worse as the uh, day continues, so I'm going to have to do a little talking here because all the audio was just terrible. So I started out... Um, I think I was in like 15 to 20 feet of water. I was around some really good boulders and some hard structure. And when when you have waves like this, I'm, I'm exposed. A lot of times what I like to do is I'm going to try to drag something, whether it be a drop shot, a football head, a Carolina rig. There's a lot of different options. And so I chose to use the Beast Coast open water sniper jig and the color so i actually helped design these jigs and i really love i, I just i i've all, i always have one tied on i catch a lot of big fish with them year round but this particular day i was using a half ounce because i really need to feel the bait and i was using just a twin tail grub and the color was mothman which is really just a darker just a, a black color um skirt and I was just dragging that along. I was using a uh, St. Croix Legend X rod. I believe that's a 7.2 medium heavy that I was using on this particular day. 14 pound. Uh, I went with Gamma line. And 14 and Gamma is some really strong stuff. I know a lot of you might think that's a little light. But I actually find that it works out perfect for these types of situations. And so... When I'm dragging that, I'm making a long cast, and then I'm gonna point the rod tip down to the water, and I'm not reeling it off. I'm just dragging. I'm just letting the wind and the current push me over the spots. So, uh, this fish here to start out the morning was actually, it was just over five pounds. And so I was on a pretty good start, but honestly, the wind picked up moments later here. Just It just got worse, and I'm like, I'm sick of, dealing with it I can go to some other protective well somewhat protected areas so I got out of this zone although I really think 
I could have had a pretty heavy bag if I would have stayed. And there you can see the actual jig itself. Real simple, easy to do. You can fish that jig so many different ways, but one of the most effective ways that I found is just simply dragging it. So I moved locations, and this is later in the morning. And I mentioned earlier in a video that I was going to kind of search for larger schools of perch. Well, I didn't find perch, but I found a bunch of bait fish schooled up. Big groups of bait fish on another flat. Again, 15 to 20 feet of water. So random. There was not a lot of structure. Now, granted, there was a boulder here, a little bit of rock there, a little ledge rock, I call it, over here. But these fish, in particular, these bigger fish, they were all just loners. They were roaming around by the pods and the groups of bait fish, and they were just... It was so random. I literally, so obviously I'm a big fan of, of forward facing sonar. So with my 360, I could find a little bit of structure. I can find the bait fish. My live scope also allows me to find the bait fish. And I would just simply hunt. And it could be 15, 20, 30 minutes between fish, but these were the right fish. And so I got really excited when I when I noticed that this pattern was developing on this particular day because almost every fish was a giant. Now, as I'm saying that, I, I think this was a smaller one. I can't remember. No, that was a good one. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't a good one. Anyways, uh, what I was doing there was I was drop shotting, so I had a little bit longer leader probably 18 inches to, to two feet. And I was using uh, another bait I developed, the Great Lakes Finesse Drop Minnow. So it's 2.75 inches. It's a tiny, tiny little bait. There's not much to it. There's not much to it. And I went with straight black on this particular day. I think I changed up colors a little bit. Actually, this one right here really got me mad. Uh, this was another giant. So whenever I'm out fishing, I, f I feel like a 25-pound bag is something I'm always shooting for. And this would be my third 5-plus pounder of the day, and it's still early. And, of course, I lose them. Do I lose them? Yeah, I lose them right here because I I just don't know. And I got, I got so mad that day because I knew what was about to unfold. I knew there... This was just another fish shortly after that other big one that was just all by himself. And I'm, now I'm hunting him. Now I'm trying to discuss what I'm doing even though it's blowing 30 miles an hour and a microphone can't pick up anything. That's why I'm here in the studio talking because I didn't want to just scrap this video because it teaches you a lesson. You don't always have to be around that, that structure, that ledge, that hump. They can just be out on a massive flat. This is a literally a massive flat. It goes for miles. And that's where these singles were hanging out. And so I was able to just have a great day. It's really salvage a windy day. It's a lot of work. Now I'm excited here for some reason. I think this, so this would have been another, this is probably another good fish. This is my day off, you know, I like to go out and have a little bit of fun. Unfortunately, the weather was crazy. So when I'm trying to search and, and make an accurate cast with my live scope, I find that pointing the boat into the wind is the best way. Now, my, I guess, how can I explain this? My, my, my target area is gonna be shorter because I'm also trying to cover water but I have the wind working against me, so the trolling motor is pretty, uh, pretty much on high or at, you know, at, at three quarters of the way. Whatever it takes for me to kind of just make some progress through that water. And pointing into the wind allows me to, once I see a fish, I can quickly get back on it. I can stay on that fish if he's too far away to make a, a cast that's going to be accurate. Or if I just want to see how he's swimming or what he's doing, 
I can get that trolling motor, I can get that, that live scope lined up on that fish a lot easier when I'm facing the wind. But when I'm searching, I'm only going about like this. I'm not literally going all the way over this way and all the way over that way. I'm keeping it a smaller window and just trying to cover water. Now, if you really want to cover water, the best way to do it is to go with the wind, right? Because now you have the wind pushing you and you can move fast. The problem with doing it that way is if I find a fish, let's say I'm going with the wind now and I, I turn over here to my left and I see one. Well, that wind's going to continue to push and I may, I, I'm, I'm, I'm decent at this. Like I can line up a cast, but when that arrow's this way and you have to reposition and then mentally think is that for you know what's a 45 foot pitch with the boat moving there's a lot of things that come into play and quite oftentimes i can miss those fish or not get back on that particular fish what are you doing travis um that was a good fish there i was i think that was almost six but you really want to Go into the wind uh, when you can. So I also found another group of fish here. And another bait that's been working really well for me is the uh, the Strike King Zero Z2. And I like the smaller size. I believe this is the, uh, the three inch. It should say right here. 2.7. I'm not sure what size that is. It's got to be the three inch, right? Three point, I guess three and a half. All right, so that's the three and a half. I guess they make a four and then a three and a half. But that is another great bait that I've been drop shotting with. And I felt like the bait fish were just a little bit bigger in this area. And so I went with this. This, this color is great. It's a gray glimmer pearl. And I just nose hook this. Another thing that you can do, uh, if you're one of those anglers that like to drop shot and like to do uh, a straight shank drop shot hook, and you, and you can thread that hook up, and then that hook point will come out in the back there. Um, I don't have a problem nose hooking. I, I try to nose hook 90% of the time. It's just easier for me. Uh, but you can certainly do that with these baits very effectively. Now. The only problem is a lot of times when you get a fish on a big smallmouth, they're going to screw this whole thing up for some reason. Like they'll twist and turn and things will get wrapped up. Uh, when I use this type of plastic and this design, uh, I get more tangles and I get more knot issues. I get more baits that are uh, pulled out. I mean, it's very durable. Okay. This is a, uh, basically it's, it's made with a last tech by Z man. Um, but it's so it can get frustrating but it is a pretty effective bait now I also found a bunch of smaller fish this day I got on some some schools of them uh, in another zone and I found this day that every group of fish seemed to have their own mood there was some fish that you would drop it and you wouldn't have to do a whole lot of slack line they would just see the bait fall come over grab it uh, but other times I had to actually throw it out there and really dead stick it on slack line. So I don't want that line to be tight at all. I just want to dead stick it and let that let that bait basically... There's a lot of buoyancy in these baits, okay? But with your drop shot hook and with the current and the waves, if you put slack in it, it will slowly go and move with the current. And so that was probably the most effective way to fish on this particular day. I wanted to throw a lot of reaction baits and try to get a jerk bait bite going and an A-rig, but here's the problem. When, when I'm on a drop shot bite, man, it's hard to get me off of it. So I stuck with it and uh, just kind of salvaged a crappy day. Uh, I really couldn't fish where I wanted to that day, but I had some good weight and I learned a lot. I fished all you know, generally new areas and, and found out that there's a ton of single fish that were roaming under that bait in and around that bait that that I could catch this day all right somewhat quick video 
Just wanted to share my experience here in the uh, fall season. It's only going to get colder from here on out. If you're interested in taking a look at some of those Great Lakes finesse products, uh, not only the drop minnow, but they have a lot of great baits, uh, you can head on over to orderbaits.com. I'll actually have a code in the description below. It'll help you save some money if you're interested in picking those up. I would highly suggest it. It's one of my top producers out there. And then, of course, the um, Beast Coast Open Water Sniper Jig. Definitely want to get your hands on some of those. If you haven't, uh, you can check them out, beastcoastfishing.com. And I'll also have a link for that in the description. And I guess we'll wrap this one up. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please do. Leave any likes and comments. And as always, until next time, we will see you on the water.